The uh, falling leaves drift by my window. The falling leaves of red and gold. I see your lips, the summer kisses. The sunburned hands that I used to hold. Since you went away, the days grow long. And soon I'll hear old winter song. But still I miss you most of all, my darling, when the autumn leaves start to fall. Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Professor Spira, and it's a little song called Autumn Leaves. Uh, it was a, an old pop tune back from 1945. And I uh, played the melody with my trombone, and then I did a little spoken uh, word treatment on the words. How you guys doing? What's going on? <laughs> uh, it's been been a little while, but uh, I'm still here. We still kicking it, and uh, things are growing as always. You know, mucus free community is uh, is really starting to thrive, and uh, just uh, always appreciate uh, everything you guys do, and. Uh, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good time. It's a good time right now. What I wanted to talk about in this video is the concept of the mucus's diet healing system as an art form. I often talk about that. I often use that in a way that I just assume everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say, well, mucus's diet is an art form and conceptually it's like okay well but if you really aren't immersed in to some type of art whether it be music or painting or spoken word or rapping or whatever it is uh artistic that you might be into if you're not really into that you might not get the full grasp of what i'm talking about so within the mucus diet healing system the lifestyle uh, and the art that I'm referring to when I say that the mucus's diet healing system is an art form, uh, the definition of art usually has to do with some kind of creative uh, endeavor, you know, creation, something beautiful uh, that's developed or created or manifested uh, through uh, certain kind of means. And in this case, you are the art. You are the product. You are the beautiful, the, the vibrant, the creative act, uh, the creative product. And what a lot of people don't realize is when, when people enjoy art, when you go and you see a concert or you admire a painting, you you just really you're you're getting the essence of all of the hard work that went into that but oftentimes especially with with musicians and stuff sometimes they say well they were just born with it or they had a talent and and that may the 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 talent part may be true uh but even if you have somebody like a Her Herbie Hancock that was playing piano when he's four years old and by the time he was 10 or 11 he was playing with a symphony uh, they're spending hours and hours working on their art uh, sometimes when people say well somebody has a gift for music to 
one way I interpret that gift is actually if you have the such a love for working through pro, for basically a love of problem solving, a love of working through different issues, uh, then that that in itself is a gift. It's it's the love of work or it's what is work to somebody else is giving you life is is helping you live uh that that's the difference <laughs> to me you know uh so to to learn how how to do you know even just what i just did there you know i couldn't read that in a book uh i couldn't get a you know a book on the science of how to play the trombone or the science of how you do you know any of that the you can study things like that so you can study where they've analyzed maybe let, let so let's for instance let's take something like tonguing on the trombone so there's articles and there's things you can study about the, the whole physiology of the tongue what it takes the muscles involved, what it takes, and, and you can then also read methods on how to do it. However, just reading it is by far not enough. See, I'm, 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 I'm tonguing, and... It would be great to have you know so, someone you you know it's great to to explore all these things and understand the science behind them, but you can't read a book on tonguing and then pick up a horn and be able to to pra to tongue. You have to spend time practicing. Now, this is Arben's famous method for trombone. This is one of the uh, standard rudimentary beginner uh, documents on how to play the trombone and there's a section in the beginning where they have principles you often hear me talking about principles of the mucus's diet so they have uh, you know, holding the trombone and need of relaxation the entire weight of the trombone should be sustained by the left hand the slide should be freely thrown between the thumb and fingers of the right hand using the elbow and wrist like hinges to lengthen the reach and not forgetting that the player must learn to throw the slide to the fingertips for the seventh position modern players use no tension in the right hand as relaxation will enable a freer system of shifting when using both elbow and wrist so it's a principle so the principle is you know you ho hold the trombone firmly with the left hand and with the right hand must remain relaxed so you could read that in a book there's different levels you could so you could read it in a book on how to do it you could read a book on human physiology and understand all all the muscles involved in the tendons and and the, the break break it down that way but how are you going to learn how to do it the application that is what is different to me about the mucus's diet healing system and being successful with the mucus's diet and just what we bring to the table in terms of the community because i don't hear anybody else talking like this that's out here in the you know raw foods communities and all these communities a lot of people like to talk about things from a scientific perspective um, and that's and that's fine i i rarely come across folks that are truly scientists you know they they're people that have read articles here or there or things on the internet or uh and that kind of thing but i rarely come across someone that's really digging deep into the uh the literature you know the academic literature and uh, uh you know medical journals and 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 you you know you have to uh, you know, people don't understand. Oftentimes, what becomes popular on you on not YouTube, well, yeah, YouTube, and just the internet in general is 
what you, there might be one study that was done that proved a particular point or suggested a particular point. And so that goes out there like, boom, and people latch on to it and say, oh, aha, this, that, and that. Uh, but that's not, it's really disingenuous when that happens. When, whenever somebody's talking about one study, that's a problem. Because within the scientific community, it's a bunch of studies that they're considering uh, to try and come up with conclusions uh, to their hypothesis or prove a particular point or, or whatever. But, my, and, my, and I'm not anti-science at all, you know, study that stuff. I, I encourage studying the origin, the history, going all the way back to the beginning, uh, you know, when you're talking about nutrition and all those kind of stuff. Go back to the beginning and start there. And if you, you do your due diligence and you go through it and you, you know, take a little biochemistry and some uh, chemistry, physics and stuff. And, and if you really feel passionate about like, man, they, they really nailed it. You know, the scientists, they, they got that down. Beautiful, you know, but and you've done your due diligence. Uh, yet still. You can study all that stuff in the world, all, and, and you can have your scales and weigh everything and have all these concepts together. Uh, my contention is that that's not going to help you learn how to master the art of mucus-free lifestyle because living does not happen in a vacuum. There's a lot that... I try to address at least when I'm talking about the mucus diet and having like lived this thing and observed other people that's lived the thing stuff happens that's beyond <laughs> the that, that affects you in real ways that's hard to quantify and say okay you you what what about if you have a death in the family how does that affect a lot of people that changes their dietary because their emotional state changed that will, well, what is, is that in the scientific study? Uh, it might be in a, you know, that maybe it's a psychology or uh, something like that, sociology. But, uh, but again, how useful is that study going to be? Uh, so my point is that I'm an advocate of thinking about life artistically. An artist views the world in it's it's just a it's a different way <laughs> to view the world, uh, and there that the thing that is er, emphasizes the gradual change, the gradual evolution over time, and, and permanent changes. Uh, every artist that I know, at some point dealt with that dealt with that principle of gradual change so when i first started off i you know i, I couldn't just pick up the horn and so that's a single tongue um if I was, say something like doodle tongue there's something called doodle tonguing <laughs> And so I can tell you the mechanics of it. So I'm saying a syllable, uh, either doodle. I can take all five vowels. So doodle, 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 now, that's something called the Doodle Tongue Mantra. I read an article by Conrad Herwig when I was a you know, junior in high school. And he had this, he's an excellent Doodle Tongue player. Not, not, not all brass players are able to develop the ability to do Doodle Tongue for whatever reason. But I was determined to learn how to play Doodle Tongue because things that I heard in my head that I wanted to be able to play, I needed that ability to, to get around the horn like that so I read that article and 
talked about this concept of the doodle tongue mantra and i'd studied a there was a method book on doodle tonguing and some audio clips uh, uh, uh bob mcchesney and so i was studying all that so but studying it was not enough i had to develop the ability to physically do it i had to develop the the, the muscles uh get used to it put put the the tongue uh, along with my my, my arm go <laughs> there was, was all kinds of stuff that you could break down in terms of like physiology that's going on i'm not thinking about any of that i'm focused on okay i i just i gotta make this happen i gotta make the be able to do this so what i used to do i'd read in that article that conrad herwig had he used to when he was on the bus going to school he had uh, i think he grew up in hawaii and he had this long drive that and i'm and i'm i'm hoping this is right is somebody can correct me if i'm wrong about that it's been a while since i read that article but uh he he had a long drive and he used to just sit there because he couldn't practice his horn at that time but he could strengthen his tongue so he would sit on the bus for two hours each way every day and you can do it without saying anything so you can and he did that for for hours every day so that's what i did so when i was in my car there was a job that i had where i was driving around taking pictures for an insurance company and i would just spend all for all those hours i was driving around i'd be in my car and i would have music going i would be memorizing music you know jazz solos of famous trombonists so i'm playing that and so i'm listening to that i'm absorbing and able to begin to sing along with these solos but i'm also doing this mantra and getting my tongue so strong just I'd slow it down then when i had the chance to pick up my horn then i'm practicing it on the horn uh and so when i started off didn't didn't sound like much but every day but and i, I tell this story because that's the type of effort there's a lot that goes on when you take you know you see artists you see somebody out there doing there's a lot of oh, above and beyond uh, in terms of effort that's going on that is that that you don't see that that's unique to that person because my story with this very different you talk to another musician and their approach and their background and everything might be totally different and uh the way that they practice might have been a whole, whole different thing uh but so so the doodle tongue so i would just you know just constantly practice it and sometimes i would i would use it in ways where i would never play it like that on stage but it was always strengthening that muscle uh and the point is i was not able to to just pick up my horn read the articles understand the science pick up my horn and do it and be able to do what i just did there was no way i spent years being able to do what i just did you know it sounds kind of hip and cool uh but you know it took years and years and years of not giving up not taking no for an answer because i know a lot of peers of mine that played trombone they gave up on doodle tongue you're like i just can't do it you know but i was determined that i was going to learn that 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 was something that i was going to learn now there was there's other things that i need to work on more and that's the thing that's that that's the attitude i mean i got i got so much stuff to, that i need to work on that i that i feel like i got to get together on this horn that i got enough stuff to to keep me working eight hours a day 
at least until I'm 120 years old. Seriously. Like that's that's how much work I know I need to put into this if I want to get if I, if I want to get good. I don't even really think I'm not necessarily good yet. You know, if if I want to really get good at this thing, I got a lot of work to do. That's the attitude that I'm talking about. And and I know some people I, I'm getting the sense that some people can't handle that type of attitude because there is, you know, I want to tell you right now, I mean, it, it, this, it's not that, I know there's people that are thinking, oh, well, I'm, um, they're thinking they're filthy all the time or they got to do this. That, that's not the right thing. You know, that, that, that's not the, that shouldn't really be the motivator in terms of that, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm not sitting here like, oh, I'm terrible at the trauma. I'm, I'm awful. Uh, I could never, I mean, I never had that attitude. I just, I always had the attitude, I can get better. So, I, I, can, I can play a little bit, but I can get better. Uh, all of my idols, you know, they're, uh, I mean, they, they never, they always had that attitude. You, I, you would think that, wow, they, they, what they just did was perfect. It couldn't get any better. They're still working. They're still practicing. They're still working on technique and stuff. Uh, when I met uh, Curtis Fuller, you know, great jazz trombonist, he still he was in the seventies. He was still working on stuff. Charles Lloyd, he's still working. That's that's the difference. That's what I'm talking about. An artist doesn't ask the question, "Well, when am I gonna get there? When am I gonna be professional? Or when am I going to be?" at this level is always a higher level to work for and so so i, I, so I don't know i'm hoping this makes a little, little bit of sense because i see that it, it's just something that i i really want people to pick up on and understand that and, and, and you don't have to necessarily be an artist in some other medium be an artist of you you're a, a be a life artist mucus free life is about life artistry, physiological artistry. You're being a, you're you're a physiological artist in transforming your physiology and your spirit and your mental capacity, which is all connected, transforming that to the best that you personally can be, the high, the highest level that you can be at. You know, so it ain't about me or Brother Air or anybody else trying to, like, oh, I'm going to do what they're doing. or try, Like, no, what do you need to do? So, like, for instance, here, here's a, a principle out of here. that, And I, I, I have a little question mark by it because I'm like, hmm, okay, well, wait a minute. Production of ascending and descending passages. As mentioned so frequently in the foregoing remarks, the mouthpiece one, once placed must not be moved e either f for ascending or descending passages. It would be impossible to execute certain passages if the performer were compelled to change the position of the mouthpiece whenever he wished to take a low note uh, after a high one in rapid succession. Okay, so that, that's a principle. It, you're not supposed to change your embouchure uh, when you're going up and down. Now, there's times when to get an effect or to do something, I totally consciously go against that principle. The thing is, I know the principle. This, I'm relating this to certain things in the Mucus's Diet book. If you know the principles, then your ability to problem solve when something comes up, because it's not about being strict and rigid in like, okay, wait a minute, hey, this says this in a book but i think i need to do this you know the principle you know the foundation then experience and time and your intellectual capacity that can help you make the right changes and decisions when you need to change because nobody's i'm not a i don't preach uh being rigid uh with this kind of thing i preach understanding the principles and then, uh, and then you got to live your life. 
you know, because then it's it, it's like when you read the book, that's that's your practice. You know, you're reading the book, you're doing, you, you know, you're working on different recipes, you're working on different juice combinations, uh, you know, different enema protocols or herbs or whatever you're working on. You know, that that's your practice. Uh, at some point, it, it gets real. And, and now you're, you're no longer just... Like, okay, let me experiment with this. Now, everything's on the line and you're getting yourself together. Uh, the next little part says, in order to produce the higher notes, it is necessary to press the instrument against the lips so as to produce an amount of tension proportionate to the needs of the note to be produced. The lips being thus stretched, the vi vibrations are shorter and the sounds are consequently of a higher nature. Now, I put an ex... Uh, uh, question mark by that because there's uh, different uh, opinions on that. I was I was often told by some teachers that you know you're not supposed to put more pressure when you play high. You have to do faster air to get those high notes as opposed to what they just say in there is just you, you sort of add a little bit more pressure uh, to the mouth. And so there's different opinions on that particular principle. The same thing with the mucus diet healing system. They're based on different people's experiences. We got the same principles, but sometimes uh, there's different interpretations of them or different tweaking them in different ways or thinking about it in a different way might help or work for one person and not necessarily work for, for another person. But, again, the, the key to me in terms of keeping some semblance of a structure is you always come back to those principles. You at least have to know what they are. You know, you know what the principles are, then you can change them or, you know, you know, kind of not change. You can't change the principles, but you can uh, consciously do something different, you know, or experiment with something else and say, okay, well maybe, uh, you know, maybe, maybe me eat something at a different time of day or, flip it around uh, again the creativity uh, you know this is a creativity now I'm saying is everybody's in different levels so if, if you're in different aspects in their transition so if you're working with trying to go buy the book working with the you know lesson 15 the menus and you know do go as much by the book as you can but that's part of your practice for that period of time that's what you're practicing you're like okay I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do this by the book there was periods of time when I tried to do just by the book, and I tried to you know play is to uh, this this uh, you know certain aesthetic that I had that I was being taught or that I heard, uh, and I'm trying to just deal with the stuff that's in the book. Then uh, once I had that down, then I'm working on start working on my own stuff uh, and developing my own thing. But again, it's it's always certain fundamentals that were established by the time I started doing that. So, uh, so this this is a video. <laughs> I've had this on my mind for a while to kind of do a video where I'm talking about art and trying to make that connection uh, and you know, get people to see it a little differently in terms of what I'm what I mean when I say mucus's diet healing system is an art form and that you it's not good enough to just even ha it's not good enough just to have the book memorized or it's not good enough to just uh you know there's no scientific book that you can read that's gonna be able to let you roll with the punches of life uh because like I was saying before, family member dies, uh, your dog dies, <laughs> you get in a car accident, you, uh, you know, heaven forbid, you, uh, you get robbed, you know, I played music on the street, I've been robbed several times, not, not at gunpoint, but I've had people, like Larson, you know, gra grab my bucket of money and run away, um, you got to deal with that. You got to deal with life. We out here. Um, you know, elect electricity goes out. When I first got to Columbus, electricity went out. 
it was out for I think it was almost two weeks. I had just moved to Columbus and I rolled with the punches. In fact, I I I like to allow adversity to serve me. So when things like that happen, I tend to get into a really kind of intensive mode and I and I fast. I actually fasted through that period because uh, not not only did my electricity go out, but my car didn't work. So I was walking to the store, riding my bike to the store. Uh, you know, and it was it was it was hot, which is fine with me. And it was, uh, you know, a lot, there was people that was dying that was around. I mean, some people I think literally were dying because they couldn't. You know, it was getting like, uh, heat exhaustion and stuff. But, um, but yeah, you know, folks was was going crazy because they didn't have their air conditioning. And I was like, I'm good. And uh, and I, you know, so I, I, I tried to enjoy the period as much as I could, and, you know, and so, but that's an attitude, you know, that's a character, you know, mucus's diet healing system builds character, uh, and, and, and character, I like to define it as, uh, the response one has, uh, to adversity, is how do you respond to adversity, uh, that's why we, we like to say, you know, a lot of the jazz musicians were characters. I mean, they lived through. You talking about 1950s? A lot of the, uh, a lot of these musicians, uh, 60s. Uh, you're talking adversity in the United States. Adversity, uh, try, trying to play a music that was not a popular music. Uh, at least, at least by the fifties and in the sixties, uh, you know, and I'm talking about a lot of my, you know, my Miles Davis and a lot of the guys that I kind of idolize. Uh, they just kept going, and uh, you know, Miles Davis, he was he was a victim of police brutality. You know, he got beat up by by police for he was outside his he was outside a theater that he was performing at and a cop a drunk cop came up was messing with him and 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 miles was like man look that's you see that that's me miles davis that's me i'm just out here he was smoking a cigarette outside and the cop came and just just started beating on his head with a with a club and um and they and then and arrested him uh that's that's adversity. That's real. You know, that's that's real life. Did Miles stop playing because because of that? He kept playing. Uh, and, and a lot of you talking about Charles Mingus, you know, look into him. You want to see some protest music. Again, adversity. He was kicked out of uh, evicted from from a home and. Uh, all this kind of stuff. And what's he do? He turns around and composes a a protest song, you know, uh, something that that's you know sign of the times. Is you know you go back. I mean, it's like a time capsule. You know, listen to that music. Listen to the message. Fable of Falbus. Uh, you know, go check check some of that stuff out. But that that is that's what I'm talking about. That character, and I don't see enough of that out here you know i don't see enough of that type of attitude and character about life where this thing is real see what what i see a lot is i see sort of that that it's kind of like a fake happy thing where it's like oh goody this is is one thing i mean there's some people that might be that happy but most people i mean I, i see there's some folks even the Instagram, it's like they smile, but their their eyes are dead. Like when if somebody if you're smiling for real, you're gonna see like you know that 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 little squinch up here. But you see like it's like like a robot, <laughs> you know. And it, I'm just and, and 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 that's and that's fine. I'm just saying that there it, it, it's it's okay. Uh, it's okay to be real with it, you know. It's okay to be like, you know, because that's how I feel, and you know, or 
you know, or if I am, if I am in that mood, I'm in that mood, you know, but we have that range and I like dynamic people, you know, I want to see people, I want to see that range, I want to see that, you know, let's, you know, just just that type of character and how we address uh, life's challenges because regardless of what happens we have to be committed to continuing the process continuing elevation taking things to the next level developing just 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 everything has to keep keep going and uh to me that that's you know that's a high level of art uh, you know, artistry, you know, life artistry. So, <laughs> hope you got something out of this. Uh, just me kind of, you know, messing around my trombone, talking about these uh, these concepts. But as always, uh, you know, really just study Mucus's Diet Healing System book. Uh, whatever version you have, study it. Uh, rational fasting. Uh, all just just you know immerse yourself into uh, the words and find that inspiration Uh, that's one of the things you know Eric's work is just really inspirational and when you find I mean that's what I was talking about before about the art the the gift to me the ability to be inspired by something to the point of wanting to totally immerse yourself in it that that's a gift the greatest artists and musicians that i know they had that they had this ability to regardless of what was going on in the life and in their family and all their the world could literally be falling apart around them but they had so much passion for whatever it is that they were into whatever their their art was they just they were always able to get lost there and, and, and come back to that. And that to me, that that's the real meditation. You know, for me, when I'm playing my music, that's, that's my, that's meditation for me. And, uh, and that's how that's, I've had the out of body and people like me <laughs> wanted me to have been asking me to talk about my out of body musical experiences. I'll do that someday. Um, but it's, it's, it's all there. But to me, it's the artistic process. Because, you know, people that master meditation, that's, that's the same process, the same start with 15 minutes a day meditating in some, some kind of manner or, or observing your breath. Then you move to 30 minutes a day uh, at some point. Then 45 minutes a day, an hour, uh, you get it to the point where you know you, you breathe three times a minute, then maybe you, you breathe a couple times in a minute. You get it down. At one point, I was able to breathe once a minute. You know, when I was really practicing uh, the breath work, which I need to get back into, real hard, real hardcore, like I was. Uh, but that when I say artistic process, I'm talking about that and assuming that evolutionary, gradual change uh upward uh, like i talked about the the spiral upward and music is definitely like that because i've had days where i've practiced a lot and i thought i was, I was like yeah okay cool i'm getting all this practice in and then i pick up my horn and i'm like wait a minute for all this practice that i'm doing i sound horrible today what is going on so that was one of those, you know, going up, up, came back down a little bit. And I practiced some more. I worked through it. I worked through it. Go back up. And ah, I have another day. Man, I sound terrible. Okay, let's go. And it, that spiral upwards that I've talked about before in uh, some of my articles and stuff. So, um, so yeah. So this was, this was fun. I hope you got a little something out of this, a little different type of video. Uh, and, uh, yeah, comment below, say, say hi, you know, how you doing? What's going on? (laughs) Tell me what, how your transition going and all that good stuff. And, uh, so, uh, so yeah. So until next time, peace, love and breath. (laughs) 